Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game uh, which has its own name and if the game has its own name that means it has to be very very unique and indeed uh, this is very unique name. So the name of the game is a long walk of a short pier and you will understand why the game got this name after the game and it was played in 1991 in Tilburg and we have Jan Thiemann from Netherlands, very strong grandmaster, and he was called uh, for some people the best of the West. That means the strongest non-Soviet player. And uh, he dominated in late 70s to early 90s. Uh, he won a lot of tournaments, uh, very strong players. However, at Tilburg 1991, he is already 40 years old, uh, but he's still very, very strong. Uh, he's ranking 2630. That means, according to the Fidelist, number 14 in the world. And he play as black. And his opponent, Nigel Short, at 25 years old chess prodigy he got his grandmaster title um, when he was 19 and in 1991 uh, he was already number seven in the world with ranking 2660 and now interesting facts about these two gentlemen just two years later in 1993 nigel short played the world champion title match with Gary Kasparov and Jan Tiemann played against Karpov for the FIDE version of world champion title. Can you imagine that? Okay, the reason is that Nigel Short and uh, Gary Kasparov said it's too much corruption in FIDE, so we create our own organization and that's gonna be, uh, you know, world champion title. And FIDE said, okay, so you have your organization and in FIDE we have our traditional uh, world champion games. So Anatoly Karpov was the last champion and he played against Jan Tiemann who lost to Nigel Short in the final of the candidates. So uh, that's why we had the two world champions in 1993 and I think it was until uh, 2006. Uh, and now Nigel Short is the president of FIDE, so he can take care of all the corruption there. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the game. We have e4 by Nigel Short, knight f6 by Timan Aliochin defense, and now e5. Knight d5, d4, d6, and now uh, if we play c4 and then f4, that would be the four pawns attack. However, Nigel Short prefers knight on f3, so uh, keeping an eye on his center, because this center is going to be very vulnerable. Uh, we have g6, so preparing to attack the center enter even more we have bishop on c4 kicking the knight knight on b6 bishop on b3 and now bishop g7 as planned queen e2 bringing yet another um, defender to e5 as this is gonna be very important and now knight c6 knight c6 of course another attacker on this e5 so now we have three attackers and three defenders so far we have castle and now think what would you play as black it's quite important moment and it would be pretty logical to play something like bishop on g4 however that would be the blunder because of these little tactics bishop on f7 king f7 knight g5 king f8 and now winning back the material king can't castle anymore and black actually are in uh, quite some troubles this is why black play first castle and now bishop on g4 is a threat this is why white play h3 we have a5 uh, threatening a4 so a4 by uh, nigel short d takes on e5 d takes on e5 and now knight on d4 attacking two most important pieces so the queen and this very well placed uh, bishop on b3 so white of course doesn't like it so knight takes on d4 and now queen on d4 and the pawn is attacked already twice so black has to do something about that we have rook on e1 uh, defending the pawn but also maybe threatening e6 
which would be very unpleasant as this is, uh, you know, E6 is controlled by white quite naturally. So we have E6 by Tiemann, but there is the problem. This bishop uh, can be developed easily now and also F6 looks like quite big weakness and now white gonna play against this weakness, okay, on the black uh, squares. We have knight on d2, preparation for that, and now look at this, what can happen? So knight f3 kicking the queen, and then if queen can reach h4, that would be pretty, pretty unpleasant, because bishop on h6, and now the knight can jump here, and already we have very dangerous attack on the black king. So uh, black of course knows about that. So we have knight on d5 bringing the knight closer and knight f3 as planned. Queen on c5, queen e4 now going to h4 and now black has to do something. So we have queen on b4 preventing that, however black in this moment uh, offering the, the pawn uh, for this because there is not really other way to, to play. So uh, for example what white can do is bishop on d5 defending the queen so it takes on d5 queen on d5 and bishop on e6 so uh, this could happen white could win the pawn however nigel short was not interested in the pawn he still want to play against that weakness so he play bishop on c4 blocking the queen and now uh, black has to do something so knight on b6 attacking the bishop and now white have two options knight on d2 defending this bishop that could be played but after bishop on d7 and then c3 queen c5 white can uh, move the bishop to f1 bishop c6 queen h4 and in this position actually black equalize the game because they have this bishop very very active bishop on this diagonal and also queen is in the center uh, the knight can jump in uh, the rooks are already connected and white still need couple of moves to you know uh, start to do the plan so for example knight on f3 bishop on h6 is still possible but black already finished development so uh, probably could very easy defend uh, this is why nigel short play b3 really great move uh, so we have knight on c4 b takes on c4 and look at this pawn structure so nigel short decided to you know mess up his pawn structure in this position white also uh, threatened to attack the queen and skewer it and win the exchange so black has to do something about that this is why we have rook on e8 if rook on d8 that would not be so great because bishop g5 Rook on d7 and now this bishop would be very very sad on c8 so not really an option this is why we have rook on e8 and now rook d1 another great move and now look at the black position so the bishop can't really go on d7 because it's controlled by the rook and also b6 can't be played because a8 rook is hanging so uh, not really possible to do anything uh, black would have to play something like rook b8 and then b6 that would be very very slow so we have queen on c5 by Timan and now queen on h4 uh, continuing the plan b6 so now black can continue the development play something like bishop on b7 and now another important moment uh, in the game so of course a uh, bishop on h6 is very natural very strong move however nigel short first play bishop on e3 asking the queen hey what are you gonna do what's your plan so black probably should go with the queen on b4 or maybe queen on f8 for example queen f8 knight g5 h5 queen f4 bishop on b7 and the game could continue white have some advantage and uh, black can try to defend however jan Timan here play queen on c6 so moving the queen away from this important diagonal and we have fight 
on the dark square. So that was not really the greatest idea. However, the idea is, of course, bishop on b7, and if knight is moved, then checkmate on g2 threat. So uh, that would be something. Uh, we have bishop on h6 as planned, bishop on h8. In these situations, usually this is the best idea to, to move. So if you don't know that, just moving the, the bishop on h8 makes the position much harder to attack. Uh, but here we have rook on d8. The rooks are not connected yet and d8 is protected by the queen. Pretty, pretty nice. Uh, and according to the engine, the best move for black would be bishop on d7. Okay, so now rook is attacked twice. And after knight on d4 attacking the queen, queen can't actually move. If, if the queen moves somewhere, then black would lose the minor piece in the game, of course. So rook e on d8, knight c6, and now bishop on c6. And this game uh, can be played from that position. What black has is the pair of bishop and pair of rooks. And of course, uh, white has the queen and the rook and the bishop. So it's still possible, probably the best option uh, for black. However, uh, it would be very difficult to defend. Uh, however, uh, Jan Tiemann play bishop on b7. So now the knight can't really move because g2 is under attack. Uh, we have rook a on d1. And now very interesting moment. What do you play? If you take the rook, actually it's losing. And it's losing in all variations. So for example, rook on d8, rook on d8, queen d8. This is of course losing. And if you play something like bishop on g7, it doesn't really matter because white have this move, queen on e7. This is what have to be found. And then rook on d8, queen d8, and we have a checkmate as well. So uh, not really an option. f6 is also losing because e takes on f6, rook d8, it looks like okay. Uh, but actually f7 and black has no choice, have to take the pawn and now queen d8 and now checkmate is coming here this way and also this way. So uh, it's difficult to defend. Of course, g5 is the only way to prolong the, the checkmate to five moves, but it's still a checkmate. So all of this is losing. So Jan Timan, of course, calculated all of that. This is why he played bishop on g7. Now rook can be taken. This is why rook from eighth rank go to d7. And now we have rook on f8 because now we have a threat, another threat. So bishop takes on g7 and after recapturing then queen f6 following by queen f7 and checkmate. Uh, this is why rook f8. We have bishop on g7, king on g7 and now rook from the first rank goes to d4. Very strong move and now uh, what's the idea? So of course queen go on f6 and now rook can go to h4 with the knight follow to g5. A uh, very um, dangerous idea. So, for example, if bishop on c8 attacking the rook, what would happen? Queen on f6, king g8, and now rook f7. Okay? Rook f7, and now rook d8. Uh, queen on e8, and of course, uh, that's a checkmate. So, not possible. Uh, this is why we have rook from a to e8, and now bishop on c8 is possible. Uh, but now we have queen on f6, king on g8, and here we have critical moment of the game. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. And don't be suggested by the thumbnail, uh, because uh, it's really not related to that. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So what white should play, and that's the easiest uh, way to win, is knight on h4. And black don't really have any move to do so, for example, bishop on a8. Now f3, defending uh, from the checkmate, so knight on g6 is coming, but now queen on c5. Pinning this rook, which is a very, very strong move. So now rook can't go to h4 and follow all these threats. So first king on h2 and now rook on e7. Uh, 
And, and and here white actually can take the rook that is the one way but knight on g6 can be also played and after f takes on g6 queen e7 now queen e7 rook on e7 and white gonna win pretty easily uh find the checkmate or, um, or or just the win the game on the double rooks on the eighth rank and of course exchange extra that's enough to win also, queen on h4 is very strong. Uh, now threatening, of course, queen on h6, and now following a checkmate here. So h5 would have to be played, queen f4, and now queen a4. This is very interesting uh, variation. Knight g5, queen a1 with check, king h2, now queen f1 and threatening a checkmate. Uh, so f3 has to be played. And now bishop on c6 attacking the rook and asking the rook what you're gonna do. And this would be very, very interesting moment of the game. What would you play as white in this position? So uh, if you think that, okay, rook on f7 and I'm gonna win this easily, actually you could win, but it would be very, very difficult because after bishop on f3, you are in big troubles and there is only one move which still give you a chances to win the game all others you know uh, just drawing the game so very very interesting uh, if you take for example g takes on f3 then we have perpetual check and that's a draw and if you play queen on f3 you're actually losing the game after rook on f7 okay so uh, this is just a losing what you can do is queen on f7 Queen f7, and this is uh, better for black because of this passed pawn, okay? So uh, that would be disaster. This is why in this position you would have to find the move rook on d2. This is the only winning move. So for example, uh, bishop on e2, exchanging the queens and rook on c7. And it's maybe winning for white, but that's gonna be very, very difficult. Uh, black still have this passed pawn, so uh, not easy task for, for white. So uh, this is not the option here. This is why in this position, uh, asking the, the rook rook you can't take on f7 you would have to play rook on c7 and now after bishop on f3 knight can go back on f3 because the rook is not on f7 okay so that's a huge difference so uh, okay in this position uh, if you found knight on h4 yes congratulations this is the winning move Queen on h4, yes, congratulations, this is the winning move. Uh, queen on g5 is also winning. However, Nigel short play h4. Very simple plan. So as you see, these plans were very complicated, maybe uh, winning faster, but h4, the plan is very simple. So h4, h5, h6, checkmate. That's a great idea. So black has to do something about that. So h5 was played. If h6, actually, that would not work. This is a, you know, very fast checkmate. So this is why we have h5. And now king h2. And here is the another critical position because this king actually now make a walk. This is the plan to, uh, to play and checkmate on g7. So this is why this game is called a long walk of a short peer. Very unique idea of bringing the king at the, you know, in the middle game, still, you know, very vulnerable king, uh, but the king can't really get attacked. Uh, the problem with this plan is if play bishop on c8, this will not work. So for example, king on g3 would not work because bishop on d7, king f4, bishop on c8, king g5, and now king h7. And now white has nothing here. So black is winning very easy here, okay? Uh, but actually after bishop on c8, what white would have to play is knight on g5. And now bishop on d7, g4 this is very strong and whatever uh, black actually do 
whatever move is done. Then of course G takes on H5, G takes on H5 and now winning checkmating and not much black can do about that. And if H take on G4, that's actually quite interesting, but it's still uh, winning for white. For example, H5, now G3 with check, F takes on G3, Queen A4, this is very, very interesting move, H6, now we have checkmate here, and now what black can do is queen c2 with check. And now actually feel free to pause the video and think what would you play as white to win this game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Uh, I know this didn't happen in the game, but actually it could and uh, if you found any other move that rook on d2 uh, then you're gonna probably lose the game if you found king on g1 this is a draw if you found rook on d2 is a win all other moves are losing and black gonna win the game can you imagine that so why it's like that because if the king move on h3 then black actually can check the king and exchange the queens and that's uh, that would be bad if the king moves somewhere uh, for example here the same thing could happen so what king can do is only move here between g1 and h2 and uh, what black do is the same b1 c2 and just check okay so uh, this is of course impossible to move if white king tried to move li like on g2 on h1 then bishop would come to c6 with check and now this would be you know winning for black that would be disaster so this is why in this move the only winning move is rook on d2 and now checkmate is coming so black have to take the rook and now king h3 is safe so uh, that's uh, very, very interesting. And of course, nothing can be done. That would be a checkmate. However, luckily for Nigel Short, bishop on c8 was not played, so he didn't need to calculate all this complicated stuff. Uh, and the rook on c8 was played. So that's kind of Zugzwang. Black has not much to play. So we have king on h3, rook c on e8, king f4, Bishop on c8 now, but it's already too late. King g5, and in this position, Jan Timan resigned the game. So he was not aware probably of this walk. And when he realized the danger with the king on g3, it was too late already. He had to move the rook, he had to move the bishop, but it's too late. King g5, and he can do nothing. King h7 doesn't work now because we have rook on f7, and of course, uh, this is easy win nothing can be done black can throw some pieces but it doesn't really matter uh, checkmate is coming so this is why here uh, Jan Timan resigned the game so uh, congratulations to Nigel Short very beautiful idea of bringing the king uh, but Jan Timan just help a bit you know <laughs> in this beautiful game this is why we have a long walk of a short peer as a one of the best ideas how to use the king in the middle game but of course the path for the king have to be totally safe but it's always good to remember ideas like that okay so thanks for watching press like if you like this video and if for some reason you don't like this this game press unlike leave the comment what you think about this game if you don't want to miss any other games like that press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one